Welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, DK Diamantes, and this podcast is all about learning about the ridiculous world of Warhammer 40k with lifelong fan Bricky. And before this podcast started, I knew next to nothing, and now it it feels good because like the pieces, uh, like the puzzle is 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 taking shape, it's taking form. We've got the corner pieces all set up. It's great. And if you enjoy this uh, podcast and you enjoy our 40k content, head over to patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous. Everything is going crazy on the Patreon, so thank you all for the support. You can get access to our Discord, HD posters, blooper reels, fantastic stuff like that. But uh, less about that and more about today's episode, which is going to be the Brute Force episode. Because, Bricky, we're talking about the Imperial Guard today, aren't we? Damn it, I was hoping that at one point I sent like seven memes in the chat and I was hoping that it would distract you and you'd fuck up the intro. Ah, you were trying to make a blooper out of me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying a little bit. I have like five memes all sent, sent and one of them is Fat Geralt as Horus punching Sanguinius. Oh, <laughs> just, Lord. Those... <laughs> I just wanted to. It, I thought it was funny. I was like, hey, it's Fat Geralt. It's great. It's got the boomer sunglasses and he's like, it's the Horus heresy. Wait, who, no. who's Geralt? Oh, oh it was a, it was a, did you end up playing the second Last of Us game? No. So at the, at the end, you get, you get this like young kid, this young, like, like uh 15 year old kid or something. He's like an outcast or something. And this really like chubby ass, um like mer not mercenary, but like raider guy who's kind of an asshole. He looks like Geralt from The Witcher, but he's really like fat. And he's got these like boomer glasses and all. And he runs up to this like, like 13 year old kid with a bow and arrow and just like fucking decks him so hard and he like <laughs> smashes his head into a goddamn uh garage door and it's just it kind of came out of nowhere but you, you know like when you when you see <laughs> i was gonna say you know when you see violence against kids and it makes you laugh no but like, <laughs> no, i was gonna say no no actually i i can't think of a time where i laughed at that it's not something i've ever thought but, but go on it's, it was just funny because like obviously he didn't want to get hit by a bow and arrow so he just punches this kid it's like it's like full force. He just like wails <laughs> on him. And I don't know, for some reason, like I got my problems with The Last of Us 2, but that part got me in stitches. So anyway, oh. that's Horace punching Sanguinius. I'm sure Shy will put it in the episode. Oh, she has to now. Now she has to put that horrible meme picture up, but didn't fuck me up. I was looking right at Audacity. No blooper reel for you today, Patreon. No blooper reel for you today. In that case... I don't have a segue for this. Let's talk about the Imperial Guard. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the Imperial Guard. <laughs> All right. I have not even a quarter of a page for notes. Uh, so this might be good. This might be bad. Because I know Imperial Guard, if I'm not mistaken, are the second most popular army in the game uh, for people to buy. The oh. number one, obviously, being Space Marines. But I think they're number two. Uh, okay. I truly believe they're number two. Uh, it might, it might be surprisingly. Tau is like really popular. Um, ah, oh. eh, they're fine. <laughs> I, I I meme on it, but they're fine. Um, uh, th like, you're a looks... weeb. You should understand. I, I am a weeb, but like a part of me, like I look at them and all I see is like, man, they're trying way too hard to be Macross robots and mechs. And it's just like, for some reason, I can't get into it. Because I know, like, everything is kind of like, you know, oh, the Space Marines are a reference to this. Or, oh, the Orcs are a reference to that. But for some reason, when I look at Tau, all I can see is rip off Macross. And it just kind of makes me mad. And I don't know I do, why. I do not know what Macross is. But I'm assuming it's some kind of Eastern-based, uh, like, like, Oh, yeah, it's, it's old school, type thing. like, uh, yeah, it's old school 80s mecha anime. It's, it's shy, shy posted the fat girls in the chat. You gotta watch it real quick before we go. Just real fast. Oh my god! Oh my god. He does come out of nowhere and just deck that kid. Holy shit! Oh I'm so sorry god. to our to our listeners who can't watch this right now. Oh god, okay. I'm it's sure fine. If you oh my god, I'm actually Carol, you'll you'll find it, but holy I'm shit. I'm actually in tears. Holy shit. That kid oh, gets bopped. I gotta oh, I gotta Lord. I gotta wipe away. 
<laughs> now, now, now that my meme image makes time. sense. That meme okay. image makes so much sense. Okay, so anyway, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 okay, Tao, um, right, no, 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 Tao, Imperial Guard. <laughs> Imperial Guard, um, so, so, I have a very small amount of notes for the Garm, and the okay. entire reason for this is because I, like, I played guard, so I started in 7th edition, I got Grey Knights, I didn't play much, I did a little bit, hang with some friends, simple stuff. I got okay. really hard back into it at the end of 8th, because I'm because right when we started making content for it, and I started off with the Imperial Guard, that was my first, like, return army. Okay. I, am, I, bought, I bought way too much, <clears throat> uh, I have like, I have like 11 Lehman Rust tanks, which is more than you'll ever need. Um, and I just have all, all this guard crap. Like, I've got a bunch of flyers, like, over a hundred infantry, bane blades, artillery, everything. And wow. for a while, uh, pre the recent Sisters re-release, because they got a whole bunch of new models, like, only a year ago, yeah. and, um, <clears throat> the Codex, they were my, my favorite army to play. Um, now the Sisters have overtaken them for a very, a various amount of reasons, so probably... I probably get more into that if we do like a dedicated sisters episode because we did like the age the reign of blood, but right, um, right, right. If we ever do a dedicated one, I'll probably talk more about that. But guard is still kind of like this, they kind of like down there in my heart, you know. Mm -hmm. They're very, they're very much like. While I might really like the sisters, I still have a nice soft spot because the reason why guard is so popular is loved so much is the simple reason: it's the underdog story, right? It's ah, a bunch okay. of just dudes. You know, we talked about all of this shit we've had to fight. These these space marines, the, the chaos demons, the necrons, the tyranids, for God's sake, yeah. the orcs. And and you are taking someone who's literally like just me. You know? Like <laughs> just I'm, a I'm bunch like of dudes. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like six foot three. That's how tall I am. The average guardsman's like six foot, six foot one. That's like the average uh, male height in the 40k. Mm -hmm. And like it's just a guy. I mean, obviously they're way fucking buffer and smarter and stronger than me because oh, I'm, I pl I play 40k. I'm not 40k. But, oof. <laughs> oof. Um, important but distinction. <laughs> it's very important, especially when you're playing the guard. But it's just that it's that underdog feeling, right? And, and yeah, also, also, if you're a World War II and World War One history nut, you play guard. Um, I'm gonna call uh, out everyone because I know for a fact that there are a bunch of men over like when you when you reach over 30 years old, no offense, DK, there's two oof. things happen two or three things happen, okay? One, you get really good at smoking meats. <laughs> or two, you become really interested in World War II history. <laughs> and if you went down the second route, you play Imperial Guard. <laughs> what if you go down neither route? I mean, do you watch anime? Oh man, you, you really you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta do that to me? <laughs> Look, man, I've watched anime for the <clears throat> years that I've been alive. All right, like it, it's not something that just started. Okay, is, fuck you, man. Is, is, is that <laughs> is that a good thing? <laughs> Wouldn't <laughs> less be better? <laughs> um. <laughs> So, God, those Imperial Guards, just a bunch those of Imperial dudes, guard. right? Oh, so cool. Just a bunch of so dudes. So cool. A bunch of <laughs> dudes, right? Jesus. Okay, so the Guard was originally founded way back during the Emperor's Great Crusade. Because as he was going out trying to find all of his Primarchs, he had to send all his Space Marine Legions out there, and he's like, well, I'm kind of stretched thin right now, right? All my Marine Legions are gone. Mm -hmm. Thunder Warriors kind of got... <laughs> so with that, he needed some kind of fighting force. So it started off like... Some small recruits, some volunteers, simple things. But as time went on, the Imperial Guard really started to grow and, and get quite quite strong and, and became a, a legitimate fighting force, both for the enemy abroad and the enemy at home. Now, eventually, as time went on, uh, the Imperial Tithe was put in place. Now, the Imperial Tithe... Is it's it's a tithe, I mean it's a tithe, right? It's obviously some kind of way to constantly gain more soldiers. Sure. As it's you know, it's like you, you pay the tithe, right? Every world had a tithe, and you had to take a certain amount of guardsmen that was forced into the guard, uh, and the got, number got more and more and more. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, and yeah, uh, Shy makes a great point. She says, "In before someone actually is the guard, before heresy was called the Solar Auxilla." I don't, I don't care. <laughs> they were called the Space Marine Legions, not chapters pre heresy. Like. Fuck you. <laughs> like I, I give a shit. I that being a shit. pretty common, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. 
This is this is not this is for new people or you know people who want to listen to memes. Yeah, again, but, remember this is the adeptus ridiculous, not the adeptus everything. Not the adeptus accuratus. <laughs> <laughs> That's so anywho, we, that's what we hope to be <laughs> the adeptus actualists. Yeah. So all the guard, you know, kept growing and growing through the imperial ties. Some big worlds got way more. Some small worlds got less. During the heresy, about like half the guard also turned traitor, similar to everything else. Except, right, it was like out of few reasons: either one, chaos corruption; two, yep. fear of going against the space marines. Or three, loyalty to the chapters that did turn chaos. Like, you know, they got saved by the Death Guard or something. They want to you know, repay oh, the Death Guard. Right, 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 right. So with that about half sense. of them turning chaos, they helped fight the battles and everything. And obviously they lost. You know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, Post-heresy, the fleet and the army were both severed. So back in the day, the Silver Exila was a combination of, of both. And so now you have the Imperial Navy and the Imperial Guard. The Navy, of course, is your starships, your, your air, yeah. uh, not your air, not aircraft, but <clears throat> specifically starships. Yeah. Um, and now the Guard, of course, is the fighting ground troop force. Uh, mm -hmm. Then commissars were created to keep the men in line. Uh, commissars, I'm sure you've seen them quite often. They were like, let's like a go, Yorick! Yep, Commissar Yark, a big boy there. They kind of have like yeah. that, that ha I forgot the name of that hat, but like that pirate looking vest and they have like a sword and a pistol. Um, mm -hmm. Entirely meant to keep the men in line, um, unless yeah. it's the Krieg and that's to stop them from killing themselves. <laughs> and then um, structure and command were all compartmentalized. They don't talk with each other as much, so rebellions will be really easy to crush. Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff happened. As far as command of the guard goes, the Lord Militant of a high, is a High Lord of Terror. He has full command. However, due to a lot of bullshit going on in the 40k universe, whether that is Tyranids severing warp connection, issues with warp travel, communication problems, etc., the general in any theater of war acts as the commanding officer. And as that goes down, if he's ice or you can't reach him, it goes then after that to like the commander and then the colonel and then so on and so forth. Uh, there is one big fancy pantsy title you do give to someone, uh, which is the title of War Master, which is like the big ultimate general. However, they don't call themselves War Master anymore. They call themselves the Lord Solar or the High Solar because uh, the Horus was the War Master. And oh, to use so the you name don't want to be of the. Like him. <laughs> yeah, to use the name of the Great Traitor is very unfortunate. Yeah. After that, the Departmento Munitorum assists. Help deals with the Imperial Tides, get your guardsmen going. And the reason I bum rush this is because that's the end of my notes. Oh. I want to talk. This is the boring bullshit. I don't give a shit about this. <laughs> I want to talk about the guard, all right? Because, all right, let's like, talk about the guard. These are like the logistics, all right? This is like all the logistical history shit, whatever the fuck. So <laughs> the Imperial Guard are, are untold billions of men and women, mm -hmm. men and women. There's not any, like, uh, or just very few uh, female, like, models, but mm -hmm. it's still plenty of men and women. Uh, probably more men, because that's just military tends to have more men yeah. than women. Yeah. But it can be both. A lot of people are not quite sure about that. But, yeah, it can absolutely be both. There's, uh, like, female commissars and stuff and all this mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but the neat thing about the Garm is just both their way of fighting and, and just the... The, the it's just interesting to see how they operate. So, for instance, the guard do not follow the imperial truth, which is what the marines followed. The imperial truth was the idea that like humanity is deemed to be the dominant race in the galaxy. It was the emperor's original idea. The right. guard follows the imperial creed, which is what the sisters of battle follow. It's the the emperor is a god, and we oh. are like, he is a deity. So the guard are oh. very like religious. They they are very much. Um, I mean, maybe not that they're sure as shit, not like sisters, but they they have <laughs> the, the the Lord Emperor, right? They they say their prayers before battle. They they do all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they're very very loyal to the emperor, which is why as a guardsman, in a in a group of untold billions of fighting men and women, <laughs> billions, they mm -hmm. still deem their efforts as worth something. Because oh. in, a, in an apocalyptic battle, in a battle where hundreds of thousands of men die by by just the like in an instant when it turns into a statistic <laughs> in an hour, 
it's always one regiment, one squad, five or six men that are able to take the objective that they would need and therefore win the battle. Because the history Damn. and the heroes are always <laughs> those few that pull it off, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That guy who lands that final shot, you know, that yeah. the guy who's able to throw the grenade or or place the lays to, to for an artillery mm -hmm. strike. All well, I mean, when stuff. you when when you're striking with that kind of force, like yeah, they're just dudes. But that's a lot of dudes. Eventually, somebody's got to break through. Eventually, somebody's got to get the objective. <laughs> Even if you're fighting some big, like, crazy 40k abomination, uh, when you go in with a force like the guards, I mean, somebody's eventually got to get the job done, right? Absolutely. And it was interesting is that, and this is something, two things that I, I should clear up because this is important because I know someone will actually me about this. Um, <laughs> we hear often about these, like, where four million men die successful mission because this does happen <laughs> yeah. quite often but that's mm -hmm. not really the the uh I, I don't know if i would if i would say that's what it's like every time but it's it's definitely i wouldn't call it the minority but i call it happens less than you'd think very oh. often you'd have a little bit more of the average ground battle a small insurgency a chaos cult has sprung up and we need to send a few squads into the into the hive city um you know there's a, a couple stragglers in this area of orcs please go deal with them you know not always is it an apocalyptic level battle <laughs> and which because of that even though like there is like a 90 percent casualty rate on the guardsman first mission yeah. That's only for like those missions, you know. There's often they don't die that quickly. Yeah, they do die a lot, <laughs> but there are many uh, situations where it's not like that. It's the same thing with like the Inquisitors and deploying Exterminatus on a planet. Like they do it, yeah, but a lot not of people that joke often. that that they see like they smell a tear and they're like ha, ah! and they slap the butts in and then it just kills the planet. <laughs> That's the Crippman way of things. <laughs> they smell a tear in it. Oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, we mentioned smelling things in the last episode. Yep, we sure did. Mm. Is that Tyranid claws? Ugh. Quick. <laughs> so if, if you get an Imperial Guard that's, like, old, that's a pretty big deal, right? Because, I mean, like e even if it's not, like, hundreds of thousands of people dying, it's like, even if you send, like, oh, yeah, this is just a normal... But it's still going to be a pretty high casualty, right? Because they're just dudes. Fear the uh, fear the old in a profession where men die young. Old mm -hmm. guardsmen, guardsmen who survive multiple deployments are, like, myths and legends. Uh, but they are some of the most stone-cold, battle-hardened men you'll ever see it's an interesting yeah. thing with guard because the guard is susceptible to lots of problems they run away from battle they get scared they have morale issues they they, mm. they constantly have stuff like that they get turned chaos quite easily because they're not as heavily like like mindful as the space marines are yeah but the thing is is that there will be situations in which space marines will run fucking clutching their blue balls and, and fleeing and guardsmen will stand the line like oh, you really? you will have both sides. Sometimes oh, okay. guardsmen will will be or show more strength, more bravery than even the Adeptus Astartes will because some of these men are just that stalwart. Damn. You you can get both. Sometimes where space marines fail to do something guardsmen's guardsmen can cuz the guard is the most strategic army. You think like, oh, so you have a million men, just throw it at them. Nah, dog, how are you supposed to do that when you've got 40 million orcs? Or well, that's, that's fair. Or the Eldar <laughs> flying in formation, you can barely even see them and they're like gunning for you. Or the Dark Eldar are moving at Mach 5. Like, how are you supposed to deal with that? You need to have incredibly impressive tactics. Guard generals are the strongest and most strategic tacticians in the entire 40k universe. Besides maybe Necrons. Damn. They yeah, are I, I, so intelligent. I, I thought when it came to the guard, it was just like, hey, yeah, we're going to fuck strategy. We're just going to throw this giant wave of people uh, at the enemy. And, you know, eventually through brute force and sheer fucking numbers, we'll get it done. Strategy be damned. We're the guard. And it's just like this wave of dudes. I, I honestly didn't realize that it was a more... A much more strategic regiment. 
Oh, significantly. Because against Tyranids and Orcs, you are outnumbered, so you have to be smart. That's against true, yeah. like the a trickery of the Eldar, how are you going to deal with them? Oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. A great, a great example of something like this happening is that actually you have good old, I think it was Creed. Uh, yeah, I think I think it was Creed. Yeah, there it is. Um, it was Creed who did a big old fight against the Eldar one day. And it was really interesting because Creed is a fantastic general. Creed is an absolute Chad. Um, and, <laughs> and he's now currently in Trazen's vault. Rest in peace. Oh, but um, he had to fight a bunch of Eldar. And through just his insane tactical genius, he was able to uh, send out delayed strategic orders to have the Eldar react to them in different ways. And therefore, he had a bunch of psychers use their psychic powers to send false readings and different kinds of oh. orders that contradict other orders to other, uh, the, uh, the Eldar can tap into due to their psychic phenomenon. And he was able to completely outwit and outmaneuver fucking Eldar, which are like oh, the fastest that's... and the speediest. That's that that's very smart, actually. That's 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 Chad status indeed. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Shia did mention that technically Trazen did save him because Kadia was dying. Um, it, we'll, we got to do Kadia at some point. We'll talk a lot about Creed during the Kadia one. But Creed in particular, like, the reason he's such a Chad is just due to his insane ability to be such an, a, a powerful tactician. The guy is interesting, too, because when you take Cream, if you're on Kadia and you're a general, like, every general on Kadia... Because Katie is like the main guard planet. It's the, the guard planet. Mm -hmm. um, they're all like perfect. They're uniforms. Not a hair on them. Shoes shined at attention Whoa. every time. Creed, he's got like terrible breath. He's, he's got cigar dust all over his jacket. He <laughs> hasn't shined his shoes in, whatever, in forever. Because he's the Lord Castellan. He's Lord Castellan Creed. This guy runs the fucking planet. This guy is the ultimate fighting general. He demands respect. Because when you think about it, like, you know, I hear this in the military often. Um, but uh, when you're in the military, you have, like, uh, like a mechanic shop. Apparently, yeah. sometimes they, they make you, like, have to clean the mechanic shop in, in, like, in like, Afghanistan or wherever the military bases are often. Mm -hmm. And I always think of that as fucking stupid. Because if the mechanic <laughs> shop is clean, then they're not actually they're not working. Yeah, they're not doing anything. They're not actually fixing anything because everything's ne so pristine. Ah. You haven't fucked it up. Never go to a <clears throat> never go to a car mechanic that has a clean shop. It means he doesn't do anything. It means he has no customers. Go, yeah. Have the guy walk up to you wiping the fucking oil off of his hands. Right. That's, that, you're, those are the you're guys. You mean a mechanic that doesn't have like you know all these like blisters and scrapes oh, on his hands yeah and, and, and if they have like perfectly pristine clean nails it's like what where's the grime where's the grease where's the dirt what are you doing because i call you it handyman yeah handyman yeah you get it I the get um it. but regardless when it comes to the, the whole like entire side of the imperial guard using that strategy it's interesting when you think about all the different kinds of strategy they can employ but like for instance, you'll have uh, there's some there's some actually really really good examples uh, on the on the actual uh, wiki page that I actually like a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna use them verbatim. Um, oh, okay. It says it says things like the Imperial Guard fights punishing battles of attrition, where incalculable lives may be expanded for each objective secure. But I like it says it uses its twin advantages of overwhelming firepower and vast numbers. Because the thing is, you've got the numbers, but oh, yeah. you've also got blistering gunfire it yeah. whereas like as tyranids or orcs might run at you with like melee weapons and stuff every guardsman has a gun the That's the true. standard yeah, yeah. imperial las gun is a a <laughs> weapon of superheated like lasers that will slightly Ooh. melt anything it touches it'll blow holes in concrete knock off limbs it is. It can uh, be shoved in mud, in sand, in rain. It'll always work. It, it's. It can be. The mag can be removed and primed as a grenade, and it is the weakest oh. weapon in 40k. The, wait, it's the weakest? It's the weakest weapon in 40k. Damn. Also, I did not realize you could remove the clip and use it as a grenade. That yep. sounds awesome. 
Um, it, it's jokingly referred to as a flashlight because that's about how powerful it is. It's like <laughs> shining a flashlight at somebody. <laughs> Jesus, really? Yep. The, 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 the super crazy las gun laser gun is just it's called a flashlight because ah fuck it but when you get the imperial guard with those numbers and you have that many of them certainly oh like, that's the it, thing. it becomes a much different so like you said you have so many superior numbers and so many guys with guns that like even like a flashlight you know is probably gonna fuck somebody up it's the wall of guns. It's yeah. like like this thing, every time it shoots something, it will hurt it somewhat because it's like a superheated laser, right? It has to make a dent in oh, everything, sure. even like a tiny dent. Mm -hmm. But when you've got like, <laughs> when you've got like 10,000 guys <laughs> firing this weapon at one time, like who gives a shit? Yeah. Suddenly it's a lot more than just the flashlight. One of my favorite quotes is, he who doubts the strength of a last gun has never ran through a field of a thousand of them. <laughs> that seems like the perfect guard quote indeed. I, I really like it because uh, sometimes I'll play guard on the tabletop, right? And the weapon mm -hmm. is terrible. It's like low strength, no armor penetration, one damage. But using a nice combination of giving my guys some special orders and stuff, I can mm -hmm. take a squad of 10 guys and put out like 37 shots. Ooh. <laughs> and, and even though they don't hit well and they don't wound well, something will get through. Yeah, you got 37 of them. Something has to do some damage. And that's one squad. And one squad is, I think, like 55 points out of 2,000. So... Oh. Get like four or five squads, and it's like, all right, we're rolling 400 dice. It's great. <laughs> Do you really? I, I mean, when you play, I mean, you, you roll more dice when you play orcs, but when you play guard, like I have uh, many times rolled like 97 shots. Holy in order to, to fire at people. And honestly, I'll do that, yeah. and then I'll only kill like two space marines. Ooh. But I killed two space marines. <laughs> That's true. You're, 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 they're just dudes and they killed space Marines, right? Yeah. Um. It's cause you got to get <laughs> through it. Like they say, we're Xenos aircraft dance and weave with impossible grace. The Imperial guard simply fills the sky with a thunderstorm of munitions from which no <laughs> amount of aer aerobatic skill can save the foe where heretical bastions stand defiant. The Imperial guard commanders call down artillery bombard bombardments, then reduce it all to rubble. Like, <laughs> It, it doesn't matter what you have to deal with. Are they are they stuck in fire nuclear missiles at them? What do I care if they <laughs> if they like are have a giant moving uh, mobile fighting force roll over them with your 10,000 tanks? Are the orcs coming in? Bring out the ogren that are bigger than orcs and oh. and like ab humans and punch the shit out of them. Is a commander being really like powerful and important and leading the troops? Get ratlings, which are like really short dwarf ab humans that are great snipers, and then bring them on the side and take out their commander. Ooh. Hey, are the Tyranids running at us? Let's run at them. <laughs> I I somehow can't Im like I'm sure it happens, but I just can't imagine like this just wave of like Tyranids. And there's this wave of just Imperial Guard just running at each other. And I'm just sure Shy has a picture. Numbers. Oh, I'm sure she does. She has a picture of everything. She um, does. But that's just <laughs> guns blazing, like rays of lasers going all over. It's just jeez. Like the, a, a the standard... amount of death and and oh Jesus. Oh, the, the sheer the sheer volume of murder on both sides. Like uh the, the sheer like level of shit that goes down with the amount of guardsmen that are there and they and they employ so many tactics like a standard imperial guard fight will probably be thundering thundering artillery like oh, yeah. a thousand artillery batteries so far away the enemy can't even see them just <laughs> launching howitzers and mortars and missiles to just hit it so hard that the earth rumbles and cracks beneath the enemy and once they've been They've been, uh, you know, broken up. Then you send in the quarter million guardsmen su supplemented oh. by 30,000 tanks. And then aircraft from the sky fly over and do bombing runs. And they drop down paratroopers and, and drop troops that jump down and go start attacking different kinds of key targets. While snipers take out the, the military. Like, it is so... Jeez. 
cool the sheer like the the ground will rumble beneath the the weight of imperial guard tank treads mm. no, th- it it's it's cool. it's no wonder that like history buffs and like world war ii fanatics i don't want to say fanatics but people that are really into like sort of that military world war stuff uh would gravitate towards the guard because that's <laughs> that's that is a very boots on the ground uh military world war type of vibe yeah, oh yeah vibe. it's very obvious that the that the yeah. imperial guard take a huge inspiration from world war one world war two mm-hmm. um like it's it's obvious both in the way they look and also in the tactics they deploy yeah. um let me let me <laughs> So there's something, uh, there's a great unit called the Bane Blade. And the Bane Blade is about, is a moving house that's a tank. <laughs> and the, the tank itself has 11 guns on it. A gigantic cannon, Ooh. multiple bolters. Can, like, this thing is a moving fortress. And the thing, like, rolls over Chaos Space Marines with ease. And then, like, they'll deploy a, a bunch of them alongside, like, the smaller Lehman Rust tanks to go along with it. But it's interesting because the Guard don't just have men and women like this. They also have psychers that go out and use fancy, like, lightning bolts to attack people. They have they have the Rattlings and the Ogrens I mentioned already. They, of course, mm-hmm. have, like, air troopers and paratroopers. There's huh. so many different things like that that go along with it to really form the backbone of an Imperial Guard army. Um, and also, what's kind of cool is the fighting style of the Imperial Guard changes depending on the regiment you're with. For instance, we talk about Cadia. Uh, the yeah. Cadians are like the main regiment. It's the ones you see in like the green uh, colored uh, chest armor. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, now, funny enough, that's actually called. It's actually flak armor, which is in real life nowadays uh, some pretty fucking strong armor. It's really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them joke that it's like it's like t- a t-shirt. In, in the 40k it's oh, it's yeah, barely it protects would. anything <laughs> yeah. i mean when you're going up against the crazy shit in in the warhammer universe yeah you know armor that's like considered by us normie humans oh it's super strong it's the best well yeah but we're not going up against like future uh laser guns and fucking chaos and acid spitting tyrannids that shoot scrotes at you so the scroll guns yeah. Yeah, the Skroka, so yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can totally see and that. And it's, it's fun, though, because, like, oh, shit, I gotta, I gotta do this because this is always funny. There are four things an Imperial Guard uh, man, uh, gets rewarded when he joins the Guard. Number oh, one, no. <laughs> the, standard is, the standard issue flak armor. Number right. two, one high-powered flashlight. <laughs> number number gun. three, the last gun. <laughs> number three, a copy of the uh, in Minotaurum. Some, I forget the name of it. It's like a book. It's it's like some kind of book that you use to understand how to be a guardsman. Um, okay. That is generally used as toilet paper during the horrible <laughs> fights that you have to deal with. And four, okay. an Imperial Guard sanctioned wheelbarrow for your brass fucking nuts. <laughs> I mean, you gotta roll them around, man. The How guard, you gonna fight? You gotta have, yeah, you gotta have big balls to hang in the guard. Like, you know that episode of South Park where, like, I forget his name's dad. He has like the gigantic balls because he wanted oh, to get yeah. testicular cancer, and he <laughs> yes. rolls them around in the wheelbarrow. In the wheelbarrow, yeah, yeah. yeah Except it's like, exactly all like brass. That. Yeah, they use them as melee weapons. They get AP plus one. <laughs> <laughs> but for like, I, can't, for I can't even imagine someone reporting on like, yeah, you know, he swung his brass te- testicles and decapitated a Chaos Space Marine. What? 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 <laughs> oh, I, one of my favorite comics is a, spa- a Chaos Space Marine runs up to a guardsman and gives him a hug, and he's and he like, no one will ever believe you, and he leaves. I <laughs> uh, hear it is the Imperial Infantryman's uplifting primer, oh. also known as toilet paper. <laughs> Yeah, that's that but, seems like something that as a guard, it's just like, whatever. And he's like, well, yeah, I'll just wipe my ass with this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Cadians, particularly, uh, Cadians specifically are very, very interesting because they spend their entire life in service. They, they, while they have lots of different deployments all across the way, like by the time you're eight years old, you will know how to disassemble and reassemble a LAS gun. By the time oh. you're 11, you're doing 12-hour artillery drills. 
By the time oh. you're 13, you're doing target practice and you can hit like a Tyranid from 100 yards with a glass gun or something. Oh. Like oh. by the time you're 16, you're probably already shipped out because you're you're a conscript and you've oh. been conscripted into the Imperial Guard. The, like or maybe 18 years old boom you're in the guard you're ready to be to join active service you Whoa. these guys are life soldiers they are lifelong soldiers they're trained from birth to become yeah. guardsmen i was gonna say you are pretty much born and bred into the business at that point like there is no other option you are just <laughs> you're you're going to the guard plain and simple you were born into it like by eight they can already assemble and disassemble a las gun it might be Jeez. younger than that i don't really know man but <laughs> yeah you have hey. no other choice this is your skill set now <laughs> you're not going to school the um and then when you take that for the cadians right because the cadians are known for being their like sir yes sir very like very stalwart group mm -hmm. You got all these other uh, regiments that are fantastic. I particularly like the Catachins. Well, I play Cadia personally, but I like the Catachins a lot. Uh, the Catachins are the Rambo-looking motherfuckers okay. on the planet of of Catacha, I think. Uh, and I, it's a death world where every single plant and animal is carnivorous, uh, and large oh. swaths of the brush has to be burned away every day because only <laughs> one out of three babies survive. Every single oh. so all of these dudes with a combination of of Darwin evolution and everything else, they're just these really big, buff, muscly motherfuckers, and they think Jeez. that Cadians are a bunch of pussies because they're like <laughs> they're like sir yes sir yes sir sir and they're just like fuck you and they like go take a cigarette <laughs> and they go piss on someone. They're they're fantastic. Right. They're they're super like uh, they're they're giant. They have these giant like machete sized knives. That are these pristine uh, knives that they use to cut away um, foliage and stuff. And, and they're very constantly the kinds of guys that'll run into battle bare chested and, and try to stab <laughs> oh, a space ring with their knife. It turns <laughs> out that orcs think that Katachin knives are the greatest thing ever and they'll constantly try to get them. <laughs> they're, they think the, the, the Humi's pointy stick is the best pointy stick. And it's a big <laughs> deal. They trade a lot of teeth for that. Oh, so they pay a lot of teeth for death. <laughs> uh, so if you were fighting an orc with one of these, uh, if you convinced them that it was, what, a catachin knife, would they be, like, scared of it? Like, would it be more effective than most weaponry? Because they're orcs, and they're like, oh, that's a it's fucking you know, that's, might. that's a great question. I don't think so, but regardless, they would still, maybe they'd be too excited to get one. Oh, that's true. <laughs> They'd be so excited to get one, they would forget what they were doing and be much easier prey. There's a couple other really awesome ones. Uh, the Vostroyan Firstborn is a really cool one. Uh, they're from the Hive World of Vostroya, and apparently the Firstborn of everyone uh, has to join uh, as a Guardsman. Um, oh, boy. Uh, so that, that's that's what their tithe is, and they're actually pretty cool. Uh, I think the the firstborn are they they've got have like this steampunky Russian vibe to it, very old school. They have like the big old hats. <laughs> oh my and god! Stuff. I just posted a picture of them. They're great. He looks like a fucking psycho. <laughs> oh yeah, they're the, they're super the cool. But the must the, they got the big old mustaches. They they're very good on like cre building, and crafting their own weapons. Uh, they've got some pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic uh, training regiments. They're very cool. That the, second uh, the picture I posted is going to haunt my dreams. Uh, I'm going to have nightmares about that. Um, good. I don't know what the, the fuck guard. that is, but... Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a firstborn guardsman. That's a guardsman? But there's the, goofy, it... there's the goofy motherfucker with like the, the twirly mustache. He looks like he's having a good time. He looks like he's about to have like a party. And then there's this fucking nightmare fuel under him. This, he he just same? has... He just has a mask on. Yeah, and it's fucking creepy. I know. They're they're totally different. That looks like a fucking space marine on like that looks like a chaos space marine. Yeah, but they're not. But I don't know if they're as quite as cool as the Valhall and Ice Warriors though. But who are they? They are uh, basically what they sound like. They're a bunch of Ice Warrior hardcore like Nordic style uh, guardsmen that they fight on Valhalla. Which is the major, like, super fucking cold planet? Mm -hmm. They're they're known as the uh, sometimes they're known as the Cold Bloods because they are they're considered some of the toughest of them all. 
Oh. Because they have to fight in these just horrid, horrid conditions. Yeah. Well, and if you if you get a fight on that planet where they're used to the cold and the enemy's not, it can work to your advantage. You know, in World War Two. You know, Hitler made the dumb, stupid, fucking mistake of let's go fight the Soviets in Russia, and they were just uh, like back, 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 back. Oh, you're all freezing to death, Ford, 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 Ford. <laughs> yeah. I that do. that's good old Valhalla. Even even orcs will like freeze by the time the Valhallans give a shit. Oh uh, yeah, that the, does make sense. That is, I, I suppose that is another that you know, it's pretty heavy World War II inspiration then. Yeah. Oh yeah, they look like Soviets without a doubt. Yeah. Uh yeah. there's the uh, Armageddon Steel Legion, which are really cool. cool. These guys are a uh they they have like gas masks and they kind of look like a little more Germany, but like World War II Germany, kind of like um they kind of have like the Kraut helmet and, oh, and right, stuff. Oh, right, right, right. Um, these guys are all about the variations of mechanized infantry. They like they're the kind of guys that'll roll in with a personnel carrier, have the dude pull a sick drift and have the, the bumper <laughs> smack an orc in the face, and then they all jump out of the back and start gunning down everyone. Then they jump back in and they run them over again. Oh, that sounds <laughs> very dope. They're they super cool. cool. They they I think they're on like a hardcore desert world called Armageddon. That's why they're called the <laughs> The Armageddon Steel Legion, which is a... Uh, oh, yeah, it's right. It's a poisoned, uh, blighted world due to industrial output. They over-industrialized. Can you imagine getting a postcard from their home planet? It's like... <laughs> a postcard that's, like, on the front. It's one of those, like, vacation ones. But it says, Armageddon, wish you were here. <laughs> 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 nope, I think I'm good where I am. Thanks. I don't need to go visit Armageddon uh, for Christmas. Um, I'll stay here on Earth. Thanks. What what what's the last one I want to talk about? Oh yeah, there's the uh, Talarn Desert Raiders. I want to do all the ones that are in the book, um, the, okay. in the actual like codex. The Talarn Desert Raiders are like a major one for a mobile vehicle gun line. These are kind of like uh, a little more Middle Eastern vibe. They have the I don't know what you really know what the what it's called. It's not a turban, but it's like the thing you wear over your head. It's like a it's, it can also be like a mask. Um, oh okay, yeah. To yeah. like stop the when, sand from getting at you. Yeah, yeah. Stop it from getting in your eyes and in your mouth and. Yeah, yeah I don't really remember the name of it, but um, that thing. Uh, and it's a, they have a large vibe of like lots of mobilized mech infantry. They have like walkers and uh and different kinds of uh, uh of transports. They're very very fast and and quick. It's supposed to be like fast and swift as the wind. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Um, they have like horses and shit. So same with the uh, the Death Corps. They also have like augmented horses. Which, by the way, I know I... someone's going to be upset. We don't not going to talk about the Death Corps of Krieg. Go back. Our first episode was on the Death yep. Corps of Krieg. That yep. was number that was our one. First episode, <laughs> and they are sad. They are so uh, sad. They are sad, sad boys. Um, augmented horses, though. Like, so are they just horses that are like retrofitted with like? Machine, because like I know the Admech have like Robo oh, God. and no, 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 Robo no, no, horses nothing like and that. stuff, but like what what the like? Because I gotta imagine in 40k, if you're strolling around on a horse, that horse is gonna get fucking annihilated. If it's just a horse, it's it, it's more like it's more like the horse has been like, through thirty thousand years of evolution is way tougher and faster and and probably has like a metal limb or two. Oh, okay. They've That's also got, like, weird talons now, I think. I think they're, like, hooves or, like, claws now. It's kind of weird. Oh, yeah, that is very strange. But, yeah, I guess I guess they've had more time to to evolve further to, to suit the craziness of the, the new 40K world that they live in. So, I guess Absolutely. That's also, Shy wants me to read an excerpt from the Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer. There's apparently oh hints from the book for when they fight other species. Quote, and I quote... Uh, I quote and I quote. No, no, no. Uh, Eldar technology <laughs> is pathetically antiquated and inferior to the standard issue Imperial Garmin equipment, and shuriken weapons are unable to penetrate flak armor. This is very untrue. Orcs are smaller and weaker than humans with brittle bones and weak muscles, and they are painfully stupid. Tau are herbivorous animals that are scared by loud noises and frightened by hairy people, and possibly incapable of mathematics and science. Gene stealers wow. are slow, sluggish, and having blunt tipped claws. Gene stealers can <laughs> cut through Space Marine armor. <laughs> I wonder how many uh how many Imperial Guard have needlessly died because that book has like such bad information in it. it They're if like, they take oh, that book really? seriously, really? that's their fault. Mm. 
Yeah, it's true. I guess I guess they were pretty low on the uh, on the totem pole. If they were like, oh, let me flip through this. That sounds about right. Yeah, orcs are stupid. I could take them. Oh, what? They can't get through my flak armor? Oh, I'll go rush ahead. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Now, I can't possibly keep talking about the Gara without mentioning the Militarum Tempestus. Um, right. So there's, a, there's an episode I really badly want to do. Like, I really badly want to do. That, but I can't figure out a good time to fit it in. And it's for something called the Scola Progenium, which is basically a, a school that allow, and the school takes uh, orphans, war orphans, mm -hmm. and it sends them into various directions. Uh, if you become a sister of battle, you go to the Scola. Um, if okay. you become a assassin, you go to the Scola. Uh, if you become a commissar, you, you go through the Scola Progenium. If you become an Imperial Navy, you go through it as well. Lots okay. of things go through there, but it is really interesting learning their training regimens. One of them is the uh, Militarum Tempestus Scions. Now, these dudes, besides the fact that they look fucking dope, they are, <laughs> like, I'm sure Shia will post a picture, they are so cool looking, but oh. they basically are Imperial Shock Troops, and they are drilled like mad. They are incredibly obedient like hyper focused and what they do is they fly in from either valkyries which are like their transports or yeah, they're yeah. up in low orbit and they have anti-grav shoots and they'll jump down in squads of like five to ten all from the sky and they'll land on the ground and pull out something they have called a hot shot las gun which is a las gun with its power turned up to the max <laughs> which allows it to have insane blistering armor piercing capability and these dudes are literally like odsts they drop in the back pull oh. out their guns and immediately fire and aim like perfect shots on everyone on the tabletop they hit with the same accuracy as space marines oh these dudes are Damn. fucking boss they are so cool they are they are drilled like like insane. They are so unquestionably obedient, mm -hmm. and they are ruthlessly efficient. They'll just drop in there Jeez. from out of the, out of nowhere from the sky. These five guys will drop in there, pull out their guns, and just start obliterating people. Their armor Damn. looks kick ass. I love the Tempester Prime because of the sick coat and like they all wear like berets and shit. Oh snap. Oh wait, so so Shy posted two pictures. One of them has him with like these cool helmets, and the other one has him with like berets and black armor and gold lining. The gold lining shit with like the red pants looks dope. Uh, the blue armored ones look nightmarish. Certainly, the uh, the guys with the berets and the and the armor those are Tempester Primes. Oh okay, I they're like uh, they're like a they're like a commander. Okay, um, gotcha. Where the other guys, like the dudes with the blue armor and the and the hardcore mask, those are your basic tempestive uh, tempestus drop troops. Those okay. are your normal your normal shock troopers. Right, the normies of the group. <laughs> they're they're constantly <laughs> referred to by the other imperial guards as golden boys because they get all the best equipment, the best uh, training, the best everything, and the and it's right. kind of a little bit of like uh, of of penis envy because. <laughs> Because anyone who's actually fought with or seen a Tempest, uh, Tempest of Scion fight would never question their their uh, power. Right. Like, you would never question Tempest of Scion. So, in an Imperial Guard battle, after the artillery has finished firing, actually, it probably never will, after the original <laughs> bombardment of artillery has finished firing, as the, the Marines, not the Marines, the Guardsmen and the tanks roll up, in the sky come Valkyries doing bombing runs and dropping off these drop troopers in the back lines of the enemy. It's oh. one of my, I, I even do that shit in, in, um, in real life. I have, when I play guard, I've got my, ten, my guardsmen rolling up in the front. I got like two artillery units in the back and I have Valkyries flying in the back lines and dropping troopers on them. So that they're being forced to choose fight the guys in the back or fight the guys in the front. Ooh, that pincer. That I pincer love the attack. pincer Jeez. move. It's so Damn. much fun. I got I got psychers to to do special abilities to cause problems to to fuck with some people. It's just mm -hmm. it's fantastic the wealth of options and opportunities you have to defeat your enemy as the guard. The the tactical it, it's cool too because like you have all these stuff, you have all these tools at your disposal. But it means nothing when you're fighting like 
marines and stuff like these crazy mm -hmm. dudes so you've got to use your tactical genius you gotta understand like when to send the guardsmen like i've sent in multiple squads of guardsmen to their death <laughs> just so they could hold a tank in place and so it can't Ooh. shoot at my more important units mm -hmm. clog the treads oh but yeah you, but it doesn't matter if, if you i don't know how to like... use them you, you just send them all to their death needlessly so you, you kind of have to have the strats. Well, sometimes, like, I fought a, a buddy of mine, and he had Mortarian, like, on the field, oh. the guy. And I, what I did is I fed him guardsman squad after guardsman squad to keep him stuck fighting nothing but guardsmen. Because so long as he did <laughs> that, I wouldn't have to have him on my tanks or on my artillery. Oh, that's, 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 that's fair. Like, um, often, if I see, like, an orc... With a with like a, like a truck or something or a giant blob of like a spec fancy orc weapons, I'll run guardsmen in there to start punching them to be like, <laughs> now you can't shoot my tanks. Like clog okay. the enemy treads with your dead. Oh, <laughs> oh man, it's it's so good to be an imperial guardsman. Hey man, oh. there is no way you can get more bitches than being in the guard. <laughs> Assuming you live to see the bitches you could get in the guard. Well, yeah, maybe, because you might get really fucked up looking. You might get all scarred. Yeah, or you might just die. Now, also, yes. we got to remember about commissars, too, because I'd be upset if I didn't talk about commissars. Okay. Uh, commissars are part of the Skull of Perginium as well. They are like the vessel of the emperor, mm -hmm. and they stop people from running. Yes. Oh, Every right. regiment is assigned a commissar. And often, the moment you'll see guardsmen start running, the commissar will take out his bolt pistol and shoot him in the head. And, and be like, uh, um, like become, like, uh, what's the term? Become a hero or become an example. So it's like, get in there and go fight the enemy. Or else. Yeah. There's no point to even try and run away, right? You might as well just, you know, launch head first in what you were ordered to do, because if you die there, whatever, you were going to, that commissar was going to shoot you for trying to desert anyway, so fuck it. Go ham. Just yeah, keep don't. Keep forward. Don't, don't go back. Your job is to, if you want, if you need to take that flank, then the commissar is going to make you take that flank. Yeah. That's the has, important has, thing. Have, like, have the Imperial Guard ever had a situation where, like, a lot of them knew that they were kind of in a futile whatever, and, like, a lot of people tried to desert, and they just overwhelmed the Commissar, because they were just like, no, we gotta get out of here, you're fucking insane. Uh, it depends. The thing is, is that good old, old Imperial Guardsmen believe that no matter what, no matter how futile it seems, no matter how unimportant it appears, to give there's nothing better than to give your life in service of the emperor. That's like, true, because they are if, very sort of religious towards like the emperor being a god, aren't they? A, a centimeter of distance gained on a battlefield is worth 10 lives. Oh, <laughs> it's a tough life being a guard, man. That's a tough life. It is, and if Jeez. you win the battle, like you have, will die in the glory of the emperor. Because it's it's also the concept that like by dying in the glory of the emperor, you will be saved. You know, oh. I mean, you you see that in this day and age, right? If you die in the glory of of X or Y religion, yeah. you martyrdom. will be saved. Yeah. yeah. And now they're not as willing to kill themselves as the sisters are because they are very big into martyrdom. <laughs> um, <laughs> between all the crazy shit that they do. Mm -hmm. Or the Kriegsmen, for instance, often, oh. <laughs> yeah. like, if you might have some people run, but very rarely is there a ton. That being said, uh, in Katachin regiments, the Rambo guys, yeah, uh, commissars tend to go missing a lot. <laughs> they don't like being told what to do. <laughs> I was going to say, no, no kidding. The big Rambo guys that think that the uh, normal guardsmen are kind of pussies. They're, oh, their commissars go missing, you say. Hmm. They don't like being told what to do. And often the commissar will be assigned. And then it'll just be like, oh, yeah, he got eaten by the plant over here in the catechins. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find his body. Oh, I don't know what happened. Hmm. Yeah. So we should, before we end the episode, I think we should talk largely about multiple characters in the guard. Just as a little bit of a te teaser. Because okay. the guard 
don't have as much lore as the Marines do, obviously, but they have such a wide spanning lore with so mm -hmm. many, like with this many people, there has to be heroes. There's got to be tons of heroes in the guard. Oh God. Yeah. 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 And while I'm sure there are going to be some guard guys who are like, you didn't cover this, 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 and this, I know, but I don't really care. Cause this, this episode's like, let's talk about how fucking cool they are. Yeah. It's about how cool they are, how they operate, how interesting it is. Like, uh, Shy posted a picture of Colonel Iron Hand Strachan. And Colonel Iron Hand oh. Strachan, let me find out. Let me, I forget what bit his arm off. Oh. Um, but <laughs> yeah, something but I, bit I, his I arm. I imagine with so many Imperial Guards and so many planets giving tithes that, like, We'll probably have several episodes on specific, like, guard regiments or guard legions or guard whatever you call them. Uh Oh, oh regiments would be is what guard regiments. Is. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I imagine there's going to be, like, several episodes on, like, different, like, specific big name guard regiments. Whereas this is sort of a, a just, hey, here's the guard in general and how they operate, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, basically we'll eventually do different individual ones because it's kind of fun. Um, mm. And also for characters too. But like a small thing for Colonel Strachan. This is a guy's Katachin, obviously. And <laughs> uh, he lost his arm to something called a Myral Land Shark. And during this entire, the entire time during this battle, he was being patched up by the medic and he kept on throwing grenades with his good arm. <laughs> and so he was like throwing grenades, he's like pitting like, these like, patching up his entire like half of his torso and his arm and he's just like throwing grenades and he's like hurry up you pussy <laughs> so he's got this giant like bionic <laughs> arm in combat and he just starts yeah. like beating the shit out of stuff in fact one of my favorite things uh that i remember seeing was that he actually had a, on the planet of uh cygnus the eighth he led a big a group of guys against the hordes of tyranids and they came against a whole bunch of like the high fleet and, and all this crazy stuff as um as they did they started doing pretty well but then this gigantic multi-limbed tyranid appeared and started pushing them all back mm -hmm. but the eventually the giant monster was brought down by uh demolition charges and uh, but not before killing one of Strachan's like captains or something yeah, but yeah. as he as the colonel uh as colonel Strachan looked over the dead tyranid's body he spit on he was like ugh i killed bigger things on my planet and he just left <laughs> what a fucking badass i have to mention <laughs> sly marbo okay i have to mention sly marbo because if i don't mention sly marbo i will be shot <laughs> sly marbo is, is kind of a meme okay um he's he's a he's kind of like the chuck norris meme way back when oh okay uh, he's also a katachin trooper uh of and course. he's got okay Sly Marbo threw a grenade and killed five orcs, and then it exploded. <laughs> Sly Marbo poked the warp through the Eye of Terror. Sly Marbo doesn't have a shadow because it got scared off. The fastest way through a man's heart is with Sly Marbo's blade. The official name for Exterminatus is Sly Marbo. <laughs> Sly Marbo hacked a tyranid to death with his own claws. Sly Marbo sleeps with a pillow under his gun. <laughs> Sly Marbo won a staring contest with a Necron. Oh. <laughs> he did, Sly Marbo doesn't sleep. He waits. Uh, damn, he, he really is. Uh, he really is Chuck Norris, isn't he? Yeah, this is exactly like the Chuck Norris meme. Sly Marbo has destroyed an entire Bane Blade class, or no, Bane Lord class Titan turned chaos by himself. However, oh God. it is not disclosed how he did this. <laughs> really it's just uh this is just hearsay huh it is it is ridiculous oh wait it's a bane lord class titan right it's not the bane blade it's a bane lord titan so it's what? one of those gigantic walking churches that serves chaos and he destroyed it by himself bullshit <laughs> yeah but so what man it's just slime marble who gives a fuck <laughs> it's just slime marble who cares sure. he's the guy he doesn't he's shower he takes blood baths he doesn't shower if at, he takes blood baths if at first you don't succeed you're obviously not slime marble <laughs> uh, I love there's it. a couple okay. there's a couple other ones we talked about commissar Yarek. 
the uh -huh. absolute shad, the dude who who lost his arm and decided to fashion an orc claw on it, mm -hmm. who the guy who took his eye out and replaced it with a laser eye because the orcs <laughs> believed he could have a laser eye. So now he does, yeah. The the man who was given a retirement, who could retire and therefore get, was given a full world to retire on a beautiful like planet to live on and who said no no yeah he turned down retirement lord castellan creed the Ca creed it, during the fall of cadia stood behind when the entire planet was cracking open to usher in the final escape pods for all the rest of the guard after suffering like eight or nine gunshot wounds to the stomach and kept wow. on ushering guys in and was the last one alive. Like, like literally went down with the ship. Like Damn. there are so many guardsmen guys that like uh Ibram Gaunt from the wonderful book Gaunt's Ghosts, the commissar uh who took over the only regiment from from Tanith. I could spend years, years. talking about this shit. <laughs> Years talking about years, yeah. <laughs> and and well, we talk about Nork Deadog too, the dude who headbutted the tear, the ogre who headbutted the tyranid, and, and pulled the dude out of his mouth. Oh yeah, that's right. We did talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> the guy's an absolute shad. <laughs> he's dumb as fuck, though, right? But he's super oh, extremely. Loyal. He's extremely dumb, but that's not the point. Yeah, the point is he had, but a Tyrion had grabbed half of a guy, right? Because the other half would have been digested. Yeah, uh, that's true. Just, let me just, I gotcha. There's uh, uh, there's Lord so Commander Solar Macarius. The Lord Macarius, who was like a giant golden saint looking dude, whose oh. entire thing was leading the guard uh, during, I think it's post uh, heresy to like, bring them to fruition he and i quote the meaning of victory is not to merely defeat your enemy but to destroy him to completely eradicate him from living memory to leave no remnant of his endeavors to crush his achievement and remove all record of his very existence from that defeat there is no recovery for that is the meaning of victory wow that's that's pretty hardcore that that um, dude is a is a boss. He doesn't just want to kill you. He wants to literally erase you from history. Yeah, I mean, if if, if no one even remembers wow. that you fought the guard, the guard have done their job. Yeah. Wow, he is badass looking. Holy shit! It's like the Imperial Guard fight ninety nine percent of battles. Like everyone, Marines, Marines, this and that. No, no. It, Every time something happens, a civil war, a chaos incursion, nids, orcs, whatever, it's always the guard that come first. It's Damn. always the guard. Every single time. What is it? And then, like, the space marine eventually show up? Or does it depend on the situation and how badly it's going? Or... Uh, well, yeah, it, 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 I don't know, it depends. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, whenever it comes down to the marines, they really, they have, like, more of a strategic strike. The mm. guard are known as the hammer of the emperor for their blunt force. The marines are the scalpel of the emperor. Right, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and they're very, very limited. Like, you might, like, it might, if you see a, a space marine, you're probably going to start praying and be like, oh my god, a space marine, I didn't remember the Death of Stardust. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You'll never <laughs> see a custodian in your entire fucking life. Yeah. Because um, the custodians are the custodians, but seeing a, a member of the Death of Stardust is insane. And sometimes okay. the the guardsmen outperform the Astartes because sometimes you just have those kinds of men in there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it, looking at it from like the outside perspective. It's just like oh, everybody loves space marine. Everybody's talking about space marines, and you think like you think the space marines are like these celebrities that are like always around and people are always seeing them. But then it's like no, actually, most civilians will never ever see one. Even though, like, you know, they're the most popular thing in 40k, and from, like, outside fan perspective, it's like, oh, of course everybody knows about the Space Marines, because they're, like, celebrities, and it's like, no, you almost never see one, as they're off Which doing... Is, they're off doing important Astarte shit. Yeah, they're off doing, they're off doing the important work, so you shouldn't ever see one as a citizen. If you do, I imagine that means troubles, uh, troubles on the way. 
either troubles on the way or you just got real lucky. <laughs> uh, actually, a, a funny thing that I, I read about a bit recently, um, another reason why Sisters of Battle are, are based and red-pilled is, be is because they apparently <laughs> hate Space Marines. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I was like, I knew I liked the Sisters a lot, but why so much? Like, aha, there it is. <laughs> ah, there no, it is. They hate the Space Marines. I mean, they don't, maybe, not, maybe not hate Ultramans, them. Right? Oh, that's what I mean, you know. I mean, maybe not hate them, so to speak, but uh, obviously they have to work with them to an extent. But yeah. because Sisters of Battle are just regular women who are not mm -hmm. augmented, similarly to the guard, the they see this uh, sisters see mutants as as heresy. So oh. because they hate heretics and stuff, they hate psychers, they hate mutants, and they see Space Marines as That's vile me. mutants. Right. Oh, because they've been sense. fucking adjusted and all this crap. Right. Oh, that makes sense. I hadn't thought about it like that, but yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, they, they don't like any of that kind of uh, augmented crap. And then, but apparently they actually really do like guard. So if you want your shipping, there's your shipping. If you, <laughs> if you want to start your shipping, because, because the guard believe in the Imperial Creed, you know, which yeah, is God like Emperor. Yeah. And where the Marines don't believe that. So they're also like, <laughs> Marines. <laughs> fucking Marines. Fucking vile. And also, also they've shown that Marines are corruptible by chaos. And oh, while the guard, not... sure, can be, it's not because they like they don't want to be. Where a lot of the Marines willingly went against the Emperor before even chaos was involved. Mm -hmm. Guardsmen need like a demon to be to like start butt fucking them before they actually start being <laughs> like, be gone. <laughs> I see, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense because they're just they're just dudes. They haven't been augmented. They haven't been adjusted. They haven't been mutated. They're just dudes that really love the emperor. Exactly, like and the they're sisters. girls that just really love the emperor. The emperor, exactly. Then you know, be that being said. That being said, the sisters do appreciate custodians quite a bit. Um, oh, I imagine they would, since they're the protectors of, like, the emperor, and they make sure he doesn't, yeah. And, and also, they're nigh uncorruptible. Like, they they have oh, never right, once right. gone to chaos, and yep. they have a bit of appreciation due to the old uh, Doge Van Dyer time frames, because they were the ones that showed them the error. Right, areas. that's right. They're the ones that took, um, I always forget her name, Alicia? Ali there you go, Alicia Dominica. Yes! Uh, patron uh, <laughs> saint of the Ebon Chalice. Yeah, that's right. They took her through all the secret uh, tunnels, and then she got... Uh, uh, n what was it? Like, nobody knows if... Nobody like, knows. Uh, what, was, what happened in there. She just came out, and she was like, You motherfuckers! Yep. <laughs> and then... <laughs> yep, exactly. That's right. It's not a Sisters episode. I'm sorry. Though, granted, they do work with the Guard quite a bit, so I think it was important to at least mention them a little bit. Yeah, because definitely. the sisters and the guard are are tend to fight together quite quite often. Um, in fact, actually, very often, whenever like Saint Celestine is on the battlefield, all the guardsmen are like like invigorated with this huge holy feeling in their body. Like the sisters be existing in a guardsman battle make the guard fight like five times as harm because they're like <laughs> uh, chanting sermons and and they're like, oh my god, the light of the emperor is literally next to us. Oh, that's cool. And they're and they're shmoovin. Dude, they're the guard so are ba uh, they're the guard are badass, man. They're they are. so cool. I mean, they're just they're just hardcore dudes. Like I think, like we hear so many like crazy, ridiculous like space marine things and chaos things and the Eldar and the Tyrion and the orcs and there's just there's something real badass about in that universe. Just a bunch of guys with las guns that are just I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. It very right. much is a Starship Troopers thing, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. And it's just, that's, it's so crazy to think in this universe, there are just, guys, they're just. There's a lot of them. They, a lot of them. There's just, there's just regiments and regiments of normal humans that are just fighting back the insanity. And, and it's there's a lot of bots. Awesome. And they're all, yeah, and they're awesome. And a lot of times they do good shit. And it's like. <laughs> against all that insanity it's like the some of the hardest motherfuckers are just hi i'm a human in the guard i'm hey, I, tough i gotta ask the the comments and people i have to ask them 
you gotta give me some stories as well. Because I know we always, there's always like, why didn't Brookie talk about this story or that story? Well, this time now you can tell me the story. Because I know there are many other incredibly badass guard characters. But I'd like you to share a couple, if you can, in the comments section of this podcast, because on the YouTube one, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would like to share a story or two, please do, because anything more, if, if I want to hear about the awesome story about the guardsman who ran out of ammo and survived uh, like two days against Tyranids by beating the shit out of Hormagons with his, the butt of his rifle, I want to wow. hear about that shit, because that sounds cool. Was that an actual thing, or did you just make that up on the spot? I made that up, but you believe it, wouldn't you? I, I certainly would, actually. I was like, that might actually be a story that he's using it as an, ex as an example, because like, I could totally see like one of those Katachin guards just being like, I don't have any ammo, fuck it, bop, and just surviving for like, you know, two, three days a week or something, and yeah, I, yeah, I could see that. I do have to say this before we go, though. Because okay. well, we will have some good episodes on the fall of Kadia one day uh, that we do need to cover it a little. Kadia is gone. Kadia has been destroyed. It's been a big fucking deal. It's a huge deal. But I have to say it, even though it's kind of said to death, and I got to be honest, I'm a little bit tired of hearing it, but I got to say it anyway. You know, like, you know that meme of the guys who are having a conversation and they say, oh, no, here come the whatever fans. And they're like shitting everywhere with flags in the air. Uh huh. Uh, it's basically like here come the Imperial Guard fans. So that that's what that is uh, always. It's always like Cadia stands. The planet broke before the guard did. <laughs> Brass balls <laughs> of steel. There tends to be there tends to be a lot of that with Imperial Guard fans. I know I'm one of them. Yeah. But the idea is that the planet of Cadia died, yet the Cadian Guardsmen still operate. They still fight oh. and they still continue. So it's the concept that the planet itself is destroyed the <laughs> planet of the under their feet broke before the humans and the guard did the statement is the planet broke before the guard did the guard are so I insane mean, and so powerful that their own planet died before they gave up that's a pretty dope quote though like if, if i was a guard fan and specifically like the Cadian guard like how could you not just paint that shit on everything and make I that know. like your mantra like that's so fucking cool to be like the planet broke before we did. like that's the, like you put that on all your banners and like that's that's the rallying cry to really get you like fucking fired up dude because that's like I oh, know I'm that's like that's like done. the macho like I'm gonna beat my chest Broke before it's been the planet, done to planet death, broke before man. me. Let's it's go. everywhere. I don't want it anymore. Well, to be it's fair, everywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm still new to this Warhammer stuff, so to me, it's just like, oh fuck yeah, dude. That's, that's true. That's what I want to get behind. That's the shit. That's true. That's true. Fair enough. Right? You, don't worry, it. You'll get tired of it one day. <laughs> it is cool though. When I read the comment section, I'm sure I will get tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, I didn't talk about the Mordian Iron Guard. I forgot one. The Mordian Iron Guard. All right. If you yeah, want to talk about uh, go for it. Yeah. They're, they're, they live on a tidally locked planet where one side is perpetually oh. dark, one side is perpetually light. And they're entirely all like super hardcore dress blues. And they're they're like drilled, oh. insanely heavily drilled. They're incredibly loyal. They have a uh, like very like, you know, the blue and the the what are those things called on the shoulders? Like that, like little fl fluffy things. Oh, I, I, I don't know what those are called. We'll just call them shoulder fluffs. Yeah. Regardless, it's a pretty it's a pretty hardcore uh, regiment and they, they 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 fuck. They fuck quite a bit. Damn, I had to mention that because I did forget serious. one of them. They look very like very, very serious and very like upstanding and like. Oof, yeah, okay. You, if you, you want to get shot in the head, don't shine your shoes. That's the Morty and Iron Guard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think that's it for this one. I, it went long. I tried to cover a lot that I could, just discussing. Like, it's about the fastest of the Imperial Guard. I mean, a lot of those World War II history buff dudes... We'll probably get like really into all the specific like nitty gritty of the guard and the and like the the ranks and the and the awards you get for being in the guard and how it's structured. Sure, sure, sure. But for the vast majority of guard players, it's just that underdog story, man. Yeah, just, it's just a being bunch that of, dude. 
yeah, being that dude in a world that should, by and large, fucking annihilate you. Like, the odds are against you if you're in the Imperial Guard, right? Like, 90% casualty rate. The odds are against you. And yet, still, somehow these fuckers are still winning. Uh, whether through strategy or just sheer fucking brute force numbers, somehow this underdog keeps winning. So I, I, I get the appeal, certainly. I'm glad. That's all that matters. Yep. In that uh, case, I think who, that's it. Is who, there anything your, else? I was gonna ask who's uh who's your favorite uh who's your favorite guard regiment? Reg oh, um I'm I'm a little bit basic. I really do like Cadia. Okay. I, I find I find Cadia pretty great. Um that being said, I also really do enjoy a lot of the uh like the scions. Uh okay. I actually have my own little scion regiment I make. I call them the one eighty eight golden gloves. Because they have Ooh. golden gloves. Uh, um, oh wow, really? That's why they're called that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it's very straightforward. It. I, I like it. Yeah, it, it. It's simple. I, I mean, they, there's other reasons, but I, I like that part as their aesthetic. Okay. Um, so I got I got them, and I have like I have like the 512 Cadian orbital defense is what I paint my Cadians as. Um, I, I like Cadians. I think they look cool. I think they're classic. I'm a little basic on that one. There's a couple other guard regiments that are really cool. The Macabian uh, Janissaries, I think, is what they're called. They're really neat. I think the Vostroyan Firstborn are really cool. But the problem is that guard model-wise are like 16 years old. They're Oof. very, very, very old. <laughs> and uh, I think the only one that's older is Craftworld Eldar. But oh. they themselves are very, very old. And they really only have Cadians for models. Like all the other ones I mentioned don't really have models. And if they do, they're like worse as, as old they are. Oh, uh, so is it so just a matter of like you always have to buy Cadian guard and then you sort of just customize them to make them look like the guard you actually want? Or you just paint them as Cadians and then you just basically say, I'm actually playing them as this instead. Oh, <laughs> okay. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, it's really, it's really not very involved. Honestly, for as many players as guard has, I'm surprised that their models aren't better. Their vehicles are pretty good looking, though. I'll give them mm -hmm. that. But a lot of their infantry look kind of crap. I was going to say, like, they're pretty popular, and there's a whole lot of them. Like, why wouldn't GW make unique guard remember regiments? The, do you remember the story of the frog and the scorpion? <laughs> yeah. that's. I, I, as soon as I said that, I was like, it's probably just another dumb GW <laughs> thing that makes no sense, isn't it? Do you remember the ending of the frog and scorpion? <laughs> <laughs> why did you sting me? It's in my nature. <laughs> Because GW State should do some dumb shit. Some dumb shit. Yep. Yep. Also, Shy said, people in the comments section, uh, feel free to suggest guard topics for future episodes. Uh, she has a full list of them here, and boy, there's a lot of guard. Um, yeah, there absolutely is. There I don't is know. quite a few. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, feel free in the comments section to suggest them. But uh, I think I think we're I think we're good for the guard I think episode. So. Ricky. Yeah. It's a long ass episode. I basically just fanboyed the whole episode, which truthfully, that's a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed myself. Uh, so, with that, I guess I'll start wrapping this up. Um, a home. huge thank you to all the patrons and all the people <laughs> joining us. Uh, lots of new people coming in, both from that orc video as well as everything else. Goddamn, mm -hmm. God uh, it's pretty damn. crazy. DK, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me DK Diamantes at everything Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Still haven't bought out that Instagram, so you got to find me at Real DK Diamantes over there. And that's 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 me. A quiet shy or quite shallow. Two places to find shy if you like to see any more of her stuff. As for me, I'm Bricky. Everywhere is Bricky, the usual type of thing. Also, uh, a big thing we got to talk about is our next episode, <gasps> and I do hope that. One, you might enjoy a possibly uh, bonus episode that might be coming soon. Oh, uh, who shit. knows? You don't know who knows it might be coming this week. We'll find out. Sorry, but I'm after not allowed that, to talk about it. Wait, what? What? TK? Sorry, I'm not allowed to talk about it. I can't. I, nope. I can't talk about it. Nope. Can't talk Secret. about. It. Not allowed. Big secrets. Big, 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 big plays, man. So that being said, for the next major episode, it, with the new codex that has just recently been released. We are going to talk about the Dark Eldar, the Drukhari. Oh, let's go. I've seen it's their, mo their models are disgusting. And oh, I, I, I like it. I like it. All the tubes, all the, all the syringes. I, I'm, I'm excited. 
it is a time to talk about what is arguably the most evil faction in all of Warhammer. The ones that put other people to shame. It's Ooh. time. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for the ridiculousness of the, of the Drukari. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. One might say the Adeptus Ridiculous of the Drukari. Bye-bye. Ah.